Being a skater, I was always, of course, looking at uh, Skateboarder magazine, and uh, I also always wanted to go surfing. Surfing for me was a big dream. Skating I could do, surfing I never could. I was, you know, 15, 14, 13, whatever, here in the mountains in Bavaria, you just don't surf. But I always wanted to do it. And um, so the first time I saw s images of snowboarding was uh, somewhere 76, 77, maybe 78, I don't know, in the Skateboarder magazine. Uh, guys like Chuck Barfoot, Tom Sims, you know, those guys. And I was immediately, I was thinking, this is it. This is my way into, to get into surfing, really. So that's how it started, just magazines, skateboard magazines. This is actually a water ski, and this to me looked like the perfect idea for making a snowboard. So I built this thing. I just put some grip tape on it from skateboard stuff. And these are actually, uh, back in the day, they had these for the heel for cross-country skis. So I got a bunch of those for grip. And this is an a inner tube from a bicycle. So essentially, you, uh, you, know, you put your feet under the rubber like that with just soft winter boots, a little bit of a binding, and that's it. That's all you need. Works still, works in the powder. Don't want to come. Don't want to come. Good times, for sure. It actually still looks pretty cool even today, you know. And of course, I was always trying to make a kicker, a launch off of, this is actually a tree stump. We're trying to launch off a tree stump. But uh, yeah, I mean, of course, you were trying to push as much as you could. Don't want to Perfect 80s styling with the mullet, with the full suits. I mean, it was really about getting that surf vibe, of course, trying to get some air. The two boards you see there are basically that water ski board and that first Sims board that I got from the US. I think this is probably one of the first snowboards that was ever actually shipped to Europe. This is the original invoice from Sims, for the Sims Pro ski board, 140 centimeters. Uh, leash, t-shirt, stickers. There's no running base, no steel edges, just some metal fins. Of course, no bindings, but the design concept of the binding is basically the same, you know. From this to this board was a leap in technology. It was amazing because this had so much more flotation. It's twice as wide, it's the same length, twice as wide. It looked amazing to me. This is looked, oh, it looks so sexy. And, just riding a couple of hours in the morning or hiking the little mountains around here. I didn't really have a desire to push anymore because I thought this is snowboarding, surfing, and the soft snow. But of course, when I saw this other stuff, it was like, wow. And then I, of course, got involved in that and became a pro rider and, and everything. <laughs> it, must, it must be me in something like 86 or 7 or so, I don't know. You have to have a face. You had to have a face like that. You had to go like, oh. Maybe I shouldn't have pulled this out, I think. You guys were not even born when this happened, so don't laugh. <laughs> camp, my camp pressure. Camp pressure. Team Fun Snowboard Camp. <laughs> it really was that 80s fun vibe that everybody was, like, having fun somehow, you know? I remember that one. You know, we did a photo shoot. So we, we did a lot of photo shoots for clothing companies those days. Yeah, snowboarders, skiers, whatever. Really crazy bright clothes. Tiger suit. Pretty sweet, huh? Riding in shorts was a big thing, you know, like this one too, like riding in shorts is important. T-shirt, shorts, spring powder. Just had to do it. But this is again, you know, I was I was trying to surf, don't forget that. You know? There was no coolness factor. There was nobody that was like cool or uncool, you know? Everybody was so stoked. I think the best thing was really that the general vibe was very positive. It was impossible to be uncool. Just not possible, because nobody was cool. Yeah.